Welcome everyone to Playboy Magazine, September 1959, and we have our annual pigskin preview. Um, this is all about the college football, I believe, which I'm not too kind of interested in, but I know many of you are with, with uh, regard to American football. We have uh, the Miss America joke, and we have Bunny Yeager, who you remember is the photographer who photographed many of the Playboy bunnies. She's got a little pictorial in here for some of her favourites over the years. Um, so the, about the front cover is obviously an autumn edition. Um, I've, I've seen this bit of jewellery here before. I think I have something similar which I'd found on eBay, but not exactly the same. But um, just to note if anyone has ever seen anything like this, I'm interested in some of the Playboy collectibles that have appeared over the years. Um, so lots of uh, adverts to start. Um, we have a little photo of Jack Cole in here. If you remember, he committed suicide in 1958. We have a little piece to remember him in the magazine, just some uh, of his, his sort of best works and a little pictorial, which is uh, nice. College fashion we have here, which are just general adverts. This one's McGregor. Um, just skip through a lot of this because most of this is... Um, just adverts we have Gantt which is a brand in the UK actually I never knew that it was around this early in America Gantt but um and we have Chanel as well which again is another big name coming through later on in the magazine you'll see MG Cars who have also come through which is obviously a British make of car um but that's coming through now as well and you had uh, the Vespers so loads of um sort of European things coming through into the magazine as well uh, I know the European thing was quite a big influence on Hugh Hefner. I remember him talking about some of the suits that were coming through in a, a Playboy penthouse video. And he was talking about different cuts of suits and how it's been influenced by Europe and that kind of thing. So uh, lots of things happening um, with the magazine and fashion and uh, everything in general. Just such a huge um, time for innovation and capitalism and consumerism, as you see through uh, from 1953 where we started. First um, piece is by Hugh G. Foster, and his name was actually Gordon Kahn. He wrote under an alias, uh, and he was actually sentenced, um, or he was actually investigated under what was called the House Un-American Activity Committee, which was basically looking at communism. Um, and he was actually, I think, sort of found guilty, and he was sort of barred from writing any scripts and uh, doing any screenwriting in Hollywood. He went on to do some other things, but um, kind of an uneventful career after that. But... Um, yeah, he was invested, investigated by this communist kind of committee just to see what was happening. There was this big fear at the time of communists infiltrating certain industries and that kind of thing. So we start to see that um, happening now, whereas with the early Playboy issues, there was no real mention of communism. There was nothing really related to any of the rioters or anything like that. But this is an instance where the European thing with obviously the Soviet Union is starting to affect people who have written for the magazine or are going to appear in the magazine. And I guess that will happen more as we head into the 60s as well. So that's interesting to note. Um, we have Pigskin Pig Preview, which is by Anson Mount. Anson Mount had two sons, Anson Mount the first and Anson Mount the second, all same name. Um, he's Anson Mount the first went on to star in some Star Trek films and he did CSI Miami, which I've just written down here. Um, so yeah, you start to see a lot of um, the people who write for these, who've written for Playboy, their family go on to do other things or they go on to do quite big things themselves, which we've seen in some of the earlier issues. Roger Price, we have uh, The Tree, uh, The Miss America Joke, and this is by Oliver Kincaid uh, on the boardwalk at Atlantic City. Uh, so obviously all the, the ladies uh, doing their shows and um, these sort of pageants that they have. Um, there's lots of that going on. We don't really have that in the UK as much. Uh, Honey directs The Consumer, uh, Gay and Wilson, um, so again quite surreal. Leonard Feather, if you remember, is the British journalist and um, I think he was a classical music player. Um, so he uh, has got a few pieces going on in the magazine as well. Cooking with Whiskey by Thomas Mario, who's been with us for a number of years. Uh, Thomas Mario. This is nice. Cole remembered. Um, obviously, it was a shame that he committed suicide, Jack Cole. But here's a nice little um, sort of collection of his works and some of his more prominent ones or, um, I suppose, more written about pieces. But um, I, I still love the style. Uh, I think him and Chuck Miller are my two favourite cartoonists. There are some more modern ones, which I won't mention as yet, but there are some really good cartoonists that come through even very late in the magazine in the 90s and that kind of thing but um they all kind of rep try to replicate this style which is um i think a tribute to uh to jack cole himself to be honest 
We have our cover girl for this month, our playmate of the month, Marianne Gaber. Um, so she went on to do some films as well within Hollywood. I think married a, a TV producer, I believe. Uh, but not a topless um, shoot for this one, just the bottom as such. Um, so a pretty basic playboy um, playmate of the month. John Dempsey with his re regular style of cartoon. His little uh, alien ship looks like it's landed and uh, oh, it looks like an alien ship. But I don't think that's meant to be. Just some people exploring and conquering one of these uh, hills, should we say. So we have Robert L. Green with more of his college classics. And this is obviously the college issue. We have this every year. Um, so I think it was always called the college issue in the past, um, but not this particular month. It's come through with the Pigskin Review and just some things for college in there. Robert Sheckley Fiction, The World of Heart's Desire playing the piper and here we have some information about different pipes and uh obviously the masculine way to smoke and Hugh Hefner was obviously a famous pipe smoker but he quit after he had that stroke if you will remember uh where he had a serious stroke but he managed to recover from it and I don't think it ever affected him in the long term but he changed his lifestyle at that point but I think his stroke was a combination of things I think he was burning the candle at both ends um he was doing obviously working really long hours on the magazine uh, plus with the smoking and probably other drugs and pills and stuff that were being taken at the time probably more just to keep him awake I think I don't think these were kind of hallucinogenic drugs there's probably some of that but I think most of it was uh drugs to just keep you awake and keep you going which in the long term is no good for you you know you, you need your sleep and your rest then you have to be uh, ready um all the time but when you're burned I say burning the candle at both ends it can uh, take its toll Bunny Yeager has this nice little pictorial on all the people that she's featured here and obviously people uh, I think I've written into the magazine to say they want to see um, Bunny uh, herself. So yeah, some nice little pictures here. These are kind of style from earlier issues. Um, some more cartoons, all in the usual style. A song in his pocket uh, by Barry Barry B. Spax. Uh, we have this cape here. So it's double double cape. I can't remember where the advert for it is now. Uh, might be up here. Uh, duly attired, a double header cape uh, is for the grand. What was that? Gridion, Gridion, Gridion. Um, more cart nice cartoons here as well. Nice style. Strangers in Paradise, a ribald classic. Uh, that, more of these little storyboard type cartoons. And then we have Morton da Costa, uh, the upbeat Nick. And this is rehearsals for the new shows that are coming through, uh, I guess, on Broadway and uh, all the little uh, pieces on each particular ones. David Allen, uh, Dallas Long. So if you're a fan of Broadway and that kind of thing, and I think, you know, the Broadway shows, they're big today, but they were, I think, even bigger at the time. You know, they were a big feature for a lot of people going to the theatre and seeing these shows. Uh, more adverts, more adverts. Uh, little cartoon here and we have uh, Eric Sokol and obviously this uh, lady's bursting out of a cake expecting to be at a huge party or banquet as it says here but this sort of sly gentleman's taken a different route and uh, got him all to, got her all to himself um, not too much else you'll start seeing the cartoons uh, sorry, the cartoons the advert sorry for MG Cars uh, if it's a double page one yeah so the new 1600 I mean MGs are still collectible in the UK I think they still hold pretty good value if they're in good condition but they were notoriously poor in terms of reliability and uh, just rusting um, I think a lot more than perhaps American cars might be more to do with climate more than anything but um, yeah they suffered uh, heavily from rust and just poor mechanics uh, and I think we're done for this month. Uh, I'm going to get on to read October 19, 15, 1959. I'm excited to get into 1960, to be honest. I really want to start that era. There's so much that comes through. Um, I know a lot of people are. I mean, I've had some nice comments that people have left for me. Uh, a gentleman, I believe yesterday, um, sort of uh, advised me that he used to work for the printing company in Chicago. Um, he used to print the early editions of the magazine, as unfortunately he had to give away his uh, collection of Playboy magazines that he had. Um, but it's interesting to hear from people who have worked on Playboy, and that's kind of really why I started this channel, was to get in touch with people who are from this era, who worked with the magazine, collected the magazine, enjoyed it, and gradually saw it perhaps dwindle and change into something different, something they didn't want to read. But I think the the, big, the fans were there, 
um, all the way through really, I think until the 80s, 90s when the magazine completely changed, uh, went a different way. But um, if you... You know, if you've got any comments about the magazine, anything you want to point out to me, if you've got some history with Playboy, I would like to hear it. So please get in touch via Twitter, Facebook, or um, or on YouTube. Just leave it in the comments. But Twitter is 109 Media. Same on Facebook as well. Uh, you can find me on there. Just search the ha- hashtag Playboy Review, and uh, it will come up with uh, various ways to get um, in touch with me but uh, i appreciate any likes or subscriptions um i don't monetize the videos uh, i just thought i'd point this out i'm not really doing this for money uh, this is really for uh just a personal experience to be honest just to enjoy playboy as a brand and the magazines and i don't ever intend to monetize these videos or have them sponsored or anything like that so um unless youtube put their own adverts on there which i think they're doing now even on Mon- uh, non-monetized channels they are putting adverts on for themselves so i can't help that but i don't personally monetize them so um give me a like give me a subscribe any comments please let me know enjoy the rest of your weekend and i'll most likely be back tomorrow for another episode and i'll see you then